Hi, I'm Chuck Dorset for Weaver Leather Craft Supply. Let's talk about making a simple but classic mask. This is one of my favorite projects. I love making masks. Three reasons. Right off the bat, first off, the rule of thumb, think outside the box. If you go online and you pull up leather masks and pull up images, you will be floored by the possibilities, the quality and the creativity, right? Okay, secondly though, a little more rarely, but if I get to wear this to a costume party, made it myself, fits me perfectly, be the hit of the party. And last, and you're probably not thinking about this, but this is my favorite, decorating your home. Say you have an Egyptian theme in your house, make an Anubis mask, isn't that cool? That is just, it's a little less than two evenings worth of work, mainly because you have to let the dye dry, okay? Now, Fox, wouldn't that look great in a kid's room? That's a cool mask. Well, we're gonna start simple. We're gonna go very simple. So, at this point, how about more mask, less chat, okay? Now, we're gonna make a pattern. First step, make a pattern, but I need some basic measurements. Now, why I say basic is we don't have to be exact on any measurements here. Now, you can be down the road, but we're gonna start simple, we're gonna start easy. So, what I need, distance from the left side of my face to the right side, inch and a half, give or take in front of my ears, so I'm at about nine inches. Second measurement from the tip of my nose, a little bit above my eyebrow line, on me that's three inches. So that's our outside dimensions. Now inside, distance between my eyes, about one and a half inches, and my eyes are roughly about one and three quarters. There's our inside dimensions. That's our room to work. Now, I've got a setup over here to make a pattern, so let's go over here, put some ink on paper. Now, it's that ink on paper, but let's go with a pencil. Now, the great thing about a mask is it's a very symmetrical pattern. So, I'm going to take my notebook paper and divide that in half, use that as my center line. I could draw out my pattern, but now, when I do only half of it and I cut this out, perfectly symmetrical. So, I'm going to take my paper. Now, my measurements for my face, 9 inches by 3 inches is my outside dimensions. So, I'm going to take my square going to square this up against the spine of the leather. Now I have to deal in halves. My face nine inches wide, so I'm going to make a mark four and a half inches, come down to three, which is my width, square against my spine. Nice. And I'm going to come out to four and a half and just connect the lines. Okay, so there's my outside dimensions. Now, again, thinking in halves, my eyes roughly about one and a half apart, so that's going to be three quarter inches wide. Roughly on my center line, again, we do not have to be perfect there, but again, thinking in halves, I'm going to come out three quarters of an inch, make a mark. Now, my eyes are roughly one and three quarters, so let's add a little room for error, so let's go with two inches of width. Now, there we go, very nice. Now we can use a straight edge, we can use a French curve, we can even use some Tupperware. Eyes are, they're critical because you can give about 10 different emotions with eyes. But let's start simple here. Let's just add in a nice, easy eye. We're going to freehand this. Nice. Now, because I want the outside edges to roughly match the eye holes, let's just freehand this in. That's going to be a nice mask. Now, I've left that open because we're going to do a little round in on that. And we're going to drop in a hole. Now, I don't want this going straight across my face. So again, let's be a little creative. Let's make that dip a little bit. Let's bring this in a little and make that dip a little bit. Very nice. So, we've got a great, easy pattern. Now again, jumping off point, very simple. But let's cut this pattern out. And let's just trim that flat for now and come back over and give that a bit of a rounded cut. All right, eyes. So drop that out. Look at that. It is as simple as that. Looks great. Now, first shot may not be perfect. We can always make another one with a, with a new pattern. But for now, that looks like a good pattern. So let's cut some leather. Looks good already. Okay, choice of leather here critical. We're gonna use a four to five ounce veg tan leather. Now, two things there. The natural veg tan, one of the characteristics is that when you wet it, it becomes very pliable. Therefore, you can mold it and it will retain that shape when it dries. Now, the other thing though, weight wise, 
The lighter the weight, the better the detail in your mold, but the less durability. Heavier weight, less mold, more durability. We're gonna go with a four to five ounce. Your project, you go with whatever weight you want. We're gonna use a four to five ounce. It's good medium weight. So, let's drop our pattern on our leather. I'm gonna take my straight edge, drop that on. That's gonna keep my pattern set. Now let's draw this in. And there we go. Okay, so our pattern is on our leather. Now let's cut. And the last cut to make that rounded. Nice. Looks great, doesn't it? Okay, so we're going to soak this in some water for just about 15 or 20 seconds because this is a four to five. It'll absorb that water nicely. But it's going to be very pliable once it's wet. And it's going to be a little difficult to mold, be a little too flimsy. So what we're going to do is set this aside. Now that's good and wet, we're going to set this aside for about 15 or 20 minutes. Then we're going to come back, we're going to mold this to our face. Nice. Now I feel it's got a little more body to it than it did when it was fully wet. So now, easily, I'm going to take this, simply going to lay this on my face, and I'm going to work this in with my thumbs and my forefingers. Then this around my face, push this a little bit tighter on my nose. Now, lastly, I'm going to pull this off. Wow, look at the contour on that. Very cool already. Let's tighten that just a little bit. Around there just a little bit. Boy, that looks, that looks great, doesn't it? Okay, let's set this aside, let it dry, and we'll add some dye. Dyeing our mask, not an issue. I've got a plastic bag down to protect my tabletop. Got some paper on top of that just so that my dye doesn't pull and cause a mess. And of course, gloves because I'm made out of leather too, and I will dye just as nicely as my mask. Now, I don't want dye necessarily on the back. If I have a little wrap around, it's no issue, but I don't want full coverage. Just in case I wear this, I don't want that to bleed off on me. So I'm going to use a simple oil dye. And let's just double check our edges, make sure we're clean and tight. Good. Looks good. Didn't get too much dye on the inside. Consistent, no holidays, just what I'm looking for. So let's set this down, let it sit for maybe an hour, hour and a half, and then we're going to put a top coat on it. So, dyed, looks good. A little bit flat, we're going to take care of that. Very classic looking mask. All right, so we're going to add a top coat. Now this is going to, it's going to condition the leather, but it's also going to give us a very rich color to our dye, and it's going to give us a matte finish, going to give it some pop. Now we're going to use an Atom Wax or a Leather Balm by Fivings. Great uh, wax-based top coat. I'm simply going to rub some on. Now, I'm going to take a cotton rag, going to wipe off the excess, and I'm going to start to buff. Now, it's going to go a little matte on me to start with, but if I stay at it just a little bit, I'm going to pick up a beautiful, clean gloss. And just a little last bit of buffing, and doesn't that look great? Boy, that color really starting to pop for me. Now, last thing we're going to do, let's add two holes, two pieces of lace, we're done. I'm going to take my revolving punch, now I've got my marks in my pattern, I'll punch two holes. Now, I've got some lace cut. I want my knot on the outside of the mask so it doesn't bother your skin if you're wearing this, but just having a knot on the outside looks kind of rough. So what I'll do is I'll take my knot in about eight inches from the end of my thong, that way, I have this cool little piece hanging out. I have plenty to go around my head and tie, but I also like a very long tail on the on thongs on the back of my neck or back, and that's going to look great. So, that is how easy it is to make a beautiful mask. I hope you make a lot of masks. I hope each and every one of them is gorgeous. Good luck with your projects. Mm -hmm.